ESPN game last night. The now two and three Knicks lost to the now four and one Cavs in Cleveland. Carmelo and LeBron played each other tough, contesting over 50% of each other's shots. Anthony scored two points when guarded by LeBron, while LeBron got 11 with Anthony as his primary defender. But LeBron stepped up in the fourth big. Melo did not. Skip, what was your takeaway from this one? Stephen A., you love you some Carmelo Anthony. I love me some Carmelo Anthony. I know it's still early, but my takeaway last night was... I was deeply disappointed in Carmelo Anthony when it mattered most. Head to head against LeBron James, who was mightily struggling with his shot, Carmelo came up very small for a Knicks team that, that I think is, is pretty good. Or let's just say not bad. They're be way better than I thought they were going to be. Are they a content? No, they're not a contender. Could they make a little noise, maybe make some kind of run at the eighth playoff spot? Maybe. I, I kind of like the team. I, I like Porzingis. I, I think he's not going to be a bust. I'll go that far this early. He's 20 years of age, seven feet, three inches tall. He's just so long. He's skilled. He's not afraid. Just a baby, but he's got high basketball IQ. I think he's not bad. And, and I watch these other, you know, Langston Galloway, you've brought him up. He's, he's not bad. Kyle O'Quinn's not bad. Uh, De Derek Williams, I never liked him before the draft, but in the role that the Knicks have him in, he's not bad. So this team had a chance last night on national television to make an early season statement at the Cavaliers. Beat them and you go to three and two. So you're one point down going to the fourth. You actually had a big lead in the game, but that's okay. You're just one down. Up to that point, Le LeBron finally made a three in the middle of the fourth quarter, and at, at that point, he was one for 16 for the season from three-point range. And we saw what happened in the first half. He blamed it on his the sleeve jerseys that they were wearing last night. LeBron had signed off on these jerseys. They had practiced in them, and he said, I'm good with it. But then, of course, he's got to blame something for his shooting woes, which have continued since the NBA Finals Don't go when he was there. a disaster. Don't go there. Well, I'm just, no, I'm just telling you. So he tears it up. He makes a big show. He's, I'm going to tear my sleeves. You know, okay, he's always, fine. He's always complained about yeah, but those he, they, always. They, he practiced in them, and he signed off. He told the league, I am good with these. So whatever. Because the league wanted he, him to play them. Okay. So, wanted him to win. All right, but the point is he was struggling mightily. You've got him on the ropes. And you let him off the ropes because in the fourth quarter, Carmelo goes one out of five. He does not get to the free throw line. He's your guy. He's your $23 million man. We all know that. He's your max guy. He should be at age 31, still at the backside of his prime in his 13th NBA season. And you just got to play a little bigger than that against the, the best player on the planet, your close friend LeBron James, who wasn't great in the fourth quarter, but he was way better than Carmelo because he goes three out of eight. He did get to the free throw line and made four out of five. He made things happen. He played with much more energy and urgency than Carmelo did in the fourth quarter. Carmelo just looked deadheaded. He looked dead-legged. And he hasn't been great in the other Knicks games this year. I know Kawhi Leonard did a number on him at the Garden. He does that to just about everybody. But uh, Carmelo had the one outburst at Washington. He scored 37. Other than that, the Knicks have kind of won in spite of him or been decent in spite of him. I need to see more because I think this team is looking for him to lift them just one more level up. And, and it has a chance to at least be respectable this year if he's what he should be. He's that guy. He's a top five scorer in this league and, and a clutch player that he's been in the past. I'm just not seeing it yet from Carmelo the way this team is looking to see it from him. Your thoughts? Well, in all fairness, not that mine. I mean, I can sit up there. You know how much I got love for Carmelo Anthony. Uh, and him being a New York Knick doesn't, doesn't hurt that notion at all. But um, I'm disappointed with what I've seen thus far. Um, and I'm disappointed because I think that, number one, he doesn't appear to be as healthy as he needs to be. I think that he looks like he's been dragging for most of the season. Um, I even watched him with the 37-point explosion against Washington, and I still found myself looking at him physically skipping, questioning whether or not he was going to last this season. Maybe you will get better as the season goes on. You continue to receive treatment, get yourself in the game playing shape, et cetera, et cetera. And we may see something different. And the upside to this is that Carmelo Anthony 
can shoot the basketball. So he's not somebody whose exploits and greatness are predicated on, you know, his physicality. It's his ability, you know, being 6'8 and about 240 and his ability to beat you from the outside is what can potentially make him lethal no matter what the situation is because when he's making shots, what are you going to do about it? But I think what you saw last night in the fourth quarter when he was going up against LeBron James is that LeBron James is in better shape than him. So John, LeBron James can amp it up to another level, another notch, and really, really do whatever's necessary in order to lift his team to victory. I think we all look at Carmelo Anthony, and even though I'm not going to sit here and say that he's out of shape, Carmelo Anthony has never, ever, ever in his lifetime been in the kind of shape that a LeBron James yeah. is in. So I think that has something to do with it as well in terms of the lack of effectiveness last night. Because Carmelo Anthony usually gives it to LeBron. Le Carmelo Anthony usually shows up and plays against LeBron James. I'm just not satisfied with what I'm seeing from him. You know how I'm feeling about the Knicks right now. Certainly they're playing better. Uh, Phil Jackson deserves a lot of credit he for does. that because they're playing better. They're playing harder. Porzingis is not a bust. He's a two- to three-year project. There's an incredible upside to him, and I think that he'll be fine. But at the same time, when you've got Vujacic in your starting lineup, you got a problem. Jerry and Grant out of Notre Dame needs to learn how to shoot the basketball. Okay, Porzingis is giving you something. Robin Lopez is marginal. We all know this. And, and you know, that's all you got I me. Mean, what do you want me to go with? The Langston Galloways of the world, the Kyle O'Quinns, the Lance Thomases, the Derek Williams. These are serviceable players, decent players. But, LeBron, but Carmelo Anthony doesn't have but so much to work with, which means he has to be in the kind of condition mentally and physically to carry this team. And he's not. So I'm not happy with what I've been seeing from him. I understand to some degree why that is. But at the same time, I got to tell you, uh, uh, they, they're not going to go very far unless Carmelo Anthony is a superstar. No doubt. And he doesn't look like a superstar right now. Okay. Are you suggesting he has not recovered from his knee issue of last year? I don't think he's fully recovered. Wow. I do not. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying that the injury is an issue, but I think the injury and the kind of setback it caused him conditioning wise, I think there's a lot for him to overcome because even when he didn't have these injuries, Skip, he wasn't known as some conditioning guru. Yeah. And so because of it, now you've got the injury and then that scales you back. Yeah, you're rehabbing from the injury so you can get on the basketball court and play. But the kind of physical conditioning that you're accustomed to having before it wasn't great. So why would it be great now? Yeah. Stephen A., my fear, and, and I'm, I'm hoping against hope this is wrong, but my fear is that Carmelo has been beaten down by such losing with the Knicks that they've lost so much that he's starting to lose his love for playing basketball, you know, where you just... You, you just get so tired and you look around at the 20 year old next to you and the guys you just listed and you're saying, ah, eh, we don't really have a chance. So you lose some heart for it. You lose some zest for, for going out and competing every night because you, you start to think, even at my greatest, I can't lift this team up. Well, let's put it in its, in, let, let, let's, let's just put it plain and simple. Carmelo will never admit it because he's too classy to do so. Um, but he knows this team is subpar to be kind. He knows that. He knows he's not playing with a championship, a, a, a squad with the potential for a championship. But at the same time, Carmelo loves his money. In an ideal world, he would love to make his money in New York City while they're winning. Um, in a less than perfect world, he'd love to make his money while he's winning, even if it was someplace other than New York. Now, this is no excuse for people to run away and say that I'm saying that Carmelo Anthony wants to get traded from the New York Knicks because I'm not accusing him of such things. But I will say this, considering how average they are, if he had an opportunity to keep to get his money, which he has now, which he now has, because he's making one hundred twenty two million dollars. And you couple that with him playing for a contender. Yeah. Do I think that he'll cry about departing from the Big Apple? Somehow, some way, I suspect he'll get over. Okay, but Knicks fans don't want to hear that this early in the season. They just think well, you're well, making well, twenty-three million this year. You know, earn your money. 
Just earn it. Which is why, which is why he won't say a word about it, um, and he probably ain't even thinking about it because it's too early in the season, not to mention the fact that they do look better than they did last year. Yep. But at the same time, they're just not a championship contender. And when you're in a weak Eastern Conference and there's debates as to whether or not you will even make the playoffs, you are the epitome of sorry. And it just comes down to that. So yeah, that's a reality that he has to deal with. He wanted to take the money. He got the money. Nobody can knock him for that. But the price that came with that was staying with the team that's ions away from being a championship contender. And he's going to have to deal with that. And so are New York Knicks fans like myself. It's sick to my stomach as it makes me uh, for this team not to be competitive. I, I have to hold on to a little bit of hope. They do look better than they did last year, and they are playing harder. So I'll give them credit for that. But that's about all they're getting from me. All right, we'll leave it there. Friday, the Knicks host the Bucks at the Garden, and the Cavs are at home again against the Sixers. Tony Romo back at practice with the Cowboys. We're talking about practice. Don't miss Skip's interesting take on Big D's franchise. It better be oh, good. Oh, better be real interesting. You're going to interesting.